find one thing. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, find something to tell him. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. You owe him your praise. God, we uh, praise you and thank you that you are the provider. We praise you and thank you that you are the healer. We praise you and thank you that you are the truth and not a truth that we need to embrace in our lives. We thank you that you are the creator that made the heavens and the earth and how you placed the sun right at the right distance away from the earth. It was no accident. We thank you, O oh God, for how you created each and every one of us. And you knew us before our parents even knew us. You said in your word that you, you, you saw our unformed substance. That means we're spiritual. And that we're fearfully and wonderfully made. God, we thank you that this with your word, <laughs> you brought us into existence. You brought earth into existence, light and darkness into existence, the animals into existence. When you said with your word, then God said, and it happened. So we thank you for who you are. Be with me today as I bring forth your word and, and step out of the way and that we will learn a couple of things about truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. six and seven it says Jesus answered I am the way and the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me John 8 32 says then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free within truth there's freedom answers. I think I'm entitled you want And John 16, 13 says, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will not speak only what he hears. And he will tell you what is yet to come. And that's the truth. John 17, 17 says, sanctify them you by the can't truth. You handle the truth. Your word is truth. You can't handle the truth. The world wants to know the truth. But can't tolerate when they hear the truth. As we will see today, as Paul was put on trial for telling the truth we will see how you know Felix responds to that truth uh, our point of focus is Paul three points of focus Paul became uh, was before Felix some false accusations was given tell the truth and demonstrate it before God and man and when we walk in his way, we will come to understand that God is in control. Even though it may seem like that God is not in control in our situations, he is in control. 
Um, I think it was the first time. Yeah, it was the first time I I drove up. Uh, I was the driver for uh, Young Life up to the camp, and I'm like, you know, enjoying myself. They had me a little uh, uh, golf cart and everything, cause you know, walking around on that ground, that concrete was really wreaking havoc on my knees. But an incident happened. I was sitting in a chair. And I got up, and somehow the chair got hooked on my wallet, flipped up, and I hit my knees like this. Now, I'm 63 years old. I haven't been on my knees like that for a minute. And that hurt. <laughs> and so somebody, somebody asked me, are you okay? I said, no, I, I'm not okay. <laughs> I said, no, I am not okay. <laughs> Exactly. I laid there and so they helped me up. But the thing is, I was asked to drive for, for the youth, the high schoolers. I couldn't say time out. I had to take some Advil and I had to keep it moving. And God blessed that day, that those days, because youth came to Christ and etc. But sometimes when we're dealing with uh, serving God, even in the midst of that, you're going to go through some stuff. You're going to have some knee problems. You're going to have some family problems. You're going to have some job issues. But here's the thing. We got the truth. And so I had to lean on the truth of God's word that I could make it. And I had to take three Advils to make sure that I can make it. <laughs> Somebody gave me three Advil. I said, oh, this stuff works. It's good. You know, so, well, our, our first point, Paul before Felix, some false accusations were given. Have you ever been falsely accused? People told lies on you that were not true? I remember one time I was falsely accused of stealing something, and I didn't realize how much that affected me even to this day. I cannot stand to be falsely accused. And, um, but Paul, he took it. He embraced it. A, Paul's first appearance before Felix, it took five days for his accusers to arrive. They accused him of being a troublemaker, stirring up dissension among the Jews. They, they said he was a ringleader of the sect that followed Jesus of Nazareth and that he attempted to profane the temple. Let's go to the scriptures. Acts 24, 1 through 9. And after five days, the high priest Ananias came down and some of the elders with a certain attorney named Tortillus and they brought charges to the governor against Paul. And after Paul had been uh, summoned, Tortillus began to accuse him, saying to the governor, since we have, through you, attained much peace and since you are a providence, reforms are being carried out for this nation. We acknowledge this in every way. And everywhere, most excellent Felix, with all thanks, thankfulness. But that I may not uh, worry you any further, I beg you to grant us by the kindness of, of, of a brief hearing, for we have found this man a real pest. Let's just pause there for a minute. We have found this man to be a pest. This man was a pest because he told the truth. This man was a pest because he displayed the truth. And you know, have you ever been, you know, when you go to uh, fishing or whatever, you go outside and these nets, they just keep coming around. They keep coming in your face. Paul was like a net to them. He just kept coming in their face. And they didn't like it. He was a pest. Question, are we a pest? Do we keep coming in folks' face with the truth? Or do we just back off? 
Paul was a pest. He wasn't going to deny what he believed. He was a pest. And uh, verse 5, And a, f a fellow who stirs up dissension among all the Jews throughout the world, and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarene. Now it was suspect that the term ringleader of the sect of Nazarene, some view, some of the Romans view that as some type of Jewish cult. So they, they like a cult. You know, because they talking about the way. And we're going to talk about that a little bit. Then verse six, verse 6. And he even tried to des desecrate the temple. And then we arrested him. And we wanted to judge him according to our own law. But uh, Lysus, the commander, came along. And with much violence took him out of our hands. Now, right there, you even see the hand of God protecting God, protecting Paul through a non-believer. That's interesting how God does that. Verse 8, ordering the, his accusers to come before you, and by examining him yourself concerning all these matters, you will be able to assert, assert the things in which we accuse him. And the Jews also join in attack asserting that these things were so. They did the same thing to Jesus. They accused him of things that he did not do. When you tell the truth and you stand on the truth, you're going to be accused of things that you did not do. Telling the truth comes with a price. It's not free. <laughs> People will combat you over telling the truth about abortion. That's a hot topic right now in our country. They will have a, a fit because the issue is not so much the conception. The issue on hand is that I want to do what I want to do. And so now you're telling them the truth about abortion and they get convicted of, of guilt because they want to do what they want to do. Don't tell me what happens. Hmm. Or even dealing with unjust issues. We don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to hear the truth about dealing with unjust things. Of shooting a man 60 times and he didn't have a gun. Versus at the Capitol only one shot was given. We don't want to talk about that. Hmm. B. Tortillus was a barrister prosecuting the case against Paul. On behalf of the Sanhedrin. You know, Sanhedrin had it out for Paul because Paul did, did, uh, believed in the resurrection of the dead, which he will speak about further in the scriptures. So he was presenting a, a shaky case against Paul. Nearly half of his speech consisted of his obvious flattering towards Felix. You know, he was trying to flatter Felix, he was trying to get on his good side. Possibly to persuade him to make a judgment against Paul. See, false accusations opens the door for the truth to be told. False accusations open the door for the truth. Not your truth. Not what's in your mind. But God's truth to be told. When you're falsely accused, lean on God's word. To tell the truth. That's why I appreciate what Elder Kenny shared about knowing God's word and how we need to embrace his word to live out God's truth. Uh, 1 Peter 2, 12-15 says, Keep your behavior excellent among the Gentiles so that in the things in which they slander you as evildoers, they may, because of your good deeds, as they observed them, glorify God on the day of visitation. Submit yourselves for, for the Lord's sake to every human situation, whether to a king as the one in authority or the governors as sent by him for punishment of evildoers and praise of those who do right. For such is the will of God that by doing right you silence the ignorance of foolish 
people. What Paul was saying and what Paul was living was silencing the ignorance of foolish people. But there's a cost for that. When you take that type of stand before people that want to get, get you up out of here. For people that has authority to, to, to move you out the way or to put you somewhere else. There's a cost when you speak truth to power. And Paul paid that cost. He was incarcerated. But here's the thing. The world wants to wants the truth, but they can't handle the truth. They can't handle the truth when you tell them that Jesus is the only way. That Jesus is the only truth. That Jesus is the only life that you should live. The world has a problem with that. You want to know why? Because they want to live their way. They want to live in their alternative facts. Which will eventually lead them to hell. Mm. Tell the truth and demonstrate it before God and man. Tell the truth and demonstrate it before God and man. Starting at verse 10. And when the governor and a, had a nodded for him to speak, Paul responded, knowing that for many years you have been a judge to this nation. I cheerfully make my defense. Since you can take note of the fact that no more than 12 days ago I went up to Jerusalem to worship. And neither in the temple nor in the synagogue nor in the city itself did they find me carrying on a discussion with anyone or causing a riot. Nor can they prove to you the charges of which they now accuse me. But here, this is what Paul admits. But this I admit to you, that according to the way, that term Jesus first used when he said he was the way. He said, according to the way which they called a sect, I do serve the God of our fathers, believing everything that is in accordance with the law. And that is written in the prophets. Having a hope in God, which these men cherish themselves, that, they, that there shall certainly be a resurrection of both the righteous and the wicked. So Paul was confessing, hey, yes, I am of that way. I believe it. I believe that Jesus is coming back. And there will be a resurrection of both the righteous and the wicked. In verse 16, in view of this, I also do my best to maintain always a blameless conscience, both before God and men. Now, after several years, I came to bring alms to, the, to my nation and to present offerings in which they found me occupied in the temple, having been purified without any crowd or uproar, but there are certain Jews from Asia who ought to have been present before you and to make, make accusations if they should have anything against me, or else let these men themselves tell what misdeeds they found when I stood before the council. Other than for this, one statement which I shouted out. <laughs> one statement which I shouted out. One statement which I shouted out with passion. <laughs> this is what Paul is saying. For the resurrection of the dead, I am on trial before you today. Tell the truth and demonstrate it before God and man. Paul replied, replied to the trouble-making charges. Paul stated that he had arrived in Jerusalem only 12 days before the trial. He, uh, detained, he was detained in Caesarea five of those days, and he had been at least three days in custody of the army. 
So he had only four days. Now you got to think about this. He had only four days in Jerusalem to find an opportunity to make trouble. In those four days, nobody had observed him disputing or causing unrest anywhere in Jerusalem. As for causing unrest throughout the world, come on, y'all, are you serious? There was no proof of this at all. We must understand that living for Christ will cause unrest. Jesus said he came to bring a sword. Dad against son, son against mom against God. It, if you live for Christ, there will be unrest. If you live for Christ, there's going to be unrest in your family. You know, I got family members. They know where I stand. And I'm, I'm not going to back off from that. But when they want to talk about some things, guess who they call? <laughs> Uncle Rayfield. <laughs> Uncle Rayfield, can we talk? I, know, I said, well, you know what I believe? Yeah, I know, but... They needed some true encouragement. I'm not going to back off because you're my relative of telling you the truth or trying to live the truth. So, you know, it's inevitable for us to tell the truth even on our jobs and in our families. Galatians 1.10 says this, For I am not seeking for the favor of men or of God. Or am I striving to please men? Who are you striving to please? Who are you striving to please? We're going to pause there for a minute. Who are you striving to please? That can they send you to hell? No. They can only destroy your body. But you need to strive to please the one that can destroy both soul and body in hell. And that sure ain't man. And that's the truth. Further on in that verse it says, If I were still trying to please men, I would not be a bondservant of Christ. Hmm. If I was still trying to please men, I would not be a pastor. I had a coach that was coming after me in college that wanted me to pursue Keep pursuing college. I thank God I didn't because my body really would have been jacked up, you know. I mean, I have knee problems now. It would be worse. So I had to make a decision. I must please God because I was a believer and I started to grow. And football had become a distraction. So we have to understand that living for Christ will bring unrest. Is it fun? It is not fun, y'all. I'm, I'm going to show you something here. I didn't think I was going to have a, a prop, but I got a prop. <laughs> See, this is what they call a gavel. And a gavel is a, is a mallet used to call attention or punctuation to a, ru a ruling, a symbol of authority and right to act officially. God had called Paul to be a gavel. This gavel brings attention to the truth that Jesus is the way. Hmm. So Paul kept bringing attention to that. Yes, I am of the way. He also brought attention to that, uh, that the resurrection is going to happen Amen. to the, uh, the righteous and the unrighteous. So there will be a hell. So some folks say, oh, he trying to scare me. Yes, I am. I'm trying to scare the hell out of you. <laughs> If I can scare the hell out of you, I done did my job. So that means you ain't going to go to hell. I'll see you up in heaven with your new body. So yes, I'm trying to scare the hell out of you. And that was the problem they were having with Paul. 
because he was a mallet. He was a gavel. If you've ever been in a courtroom, you hear a judge hit that mallet, that's to get your attention. God has used Paul to get their attention. Hmm. Question. Are you willing to be God's mallet? This mallet has some beat up on it. You will get beat up on. Are you willing to be that? B. Paul replies to the temple uh, uh, desecration charge. Paul stated his purpose in coming to Jerusalem and entering the temple. It was bring gifts of charity and religious offerings to the Jewish nation. He was... He was purified in the temple and had brought no impure things or person into the temple. In other words, Paul had a blameless conscience. Verse 16. In view of this, I also do my best to maintain always a blameless conscience, both before God and men. When we have a blameless conscience before God and men, God will honor that. See, Paul did confess that he is of the way. Here you go again. He confessed it. I am of the way. And shouted with passion his belief in the resurrection of the dead. My question is this. Where is our passion for Christ? Where is our passion for Christ? I know, you know, you know, I, you know, if you want to put me in the category of pro-life, but here's the thing. Yes, I'm pro-life, but here's the thing. We need to be pro-prayer. Listen to what I'm saying. While they out there, you know, you know, lobbying and want this and want that, why can't there be a big group of folk out there that ain't involved in it just praying that people come and know the truth? Yeah, I know you say you could do it in a building, but we need to be out there so when folks ask, what y'all doing? Oh, we just praying. Folks see us out there praying. Oh, God's going to do some things. That's, that's a passion. You know, when we out there uh, uh, silently protesting about injustice and just praying, that's a passion. Because people are going to ask, what are you doing out here? Well, we're just praying about the situation. It will open the door. Is that fearful? Is there fear there? Yes. There's fear there. Because here's the thing. You might be misunderstood of one of those persons that are being violent or falsely accused like Paul. Paul did confess that he is of the way. And he shouted with passion his belief in the resurrection of the dead. 2 Timothy 2.15 says this. Be diligent to present yourself to prove to God as a workman who does not be ashamed, accurately handling the word of truth. Why are we so shameful? Why are we shameful for what we believe? Is it, is it that we will be called a, a Bible thumper? Or a person that believes in God's word? Sometimes... You, we're going to go through those things. Let them say what they're going to say. But when you tell the truth, the truth will set them free. And God will fight against their ignorance. It's not your fight. It's his. Huh. God was using Paul as a mallet to bring attention to the truth. God wants to use you and your family as a mallet to bring the truth. Sometimes a mallet is misunderstood because it keeps making this annoying noise. And that's called truth. When you tell the truth, this is what it's going to sound like when you, to them. When you tell the truth, you're going to be like a gnat in their face. And it's just, hey, you, you're living it out. You're trying to do what's right. It's going to be misunderstood. I had a niece tell me, Pat, uh, Uncle Rayfield, you you are of the old school. I said, no, ain't nothing old school about God's word. I said, what it is, is that y'all have all this technology and y'all think that's, you know, all that. When the Ecclesiastes said there's nothing new under the sun. 
And so what it really what we're really talking about is the truth. You have a problem with the truth because you want to live the way you want to live. But I'm telling you, if you're a believer, God has called you to be a mallet. Keep telling the truth. Keep living the truth. Keep walking the truth. In the midst of adversity, is it easy? No, it's not. It wasn't easy for me to work on this sermon. I had to work on this sermon in phases. You got to understand. <laughs> I'm not used to sitting down at my desk and then taking a break because my knee is bothering me. I had to go in phases, you know. And so, but I had to be persistent because it was my time up to do it. And I had to do what God has called me to do in the midst of my physical issues. Is it easy? No, it is not. But we are called to be God's mallet. The world says they want the truth. <laughs> but they can't handle the truth. Our third point. When we walk in his way, we will come to understand that God is in control. Now I have to admit, this is probably the hardest part of the passage that I was really struggling with. And I'm going to share with you why. In verse 22 to 27, it says this. But Felix, having a more excellent knowledge about the way, put them off, saying, when Lysus, the, the commander, comes down, I will decide your case. And he gave orders to the centurion for him to be kept in custody, and yet have some freedom and not to prevent any of his, his friends from ministering to him. Now, you got to understand, that within itself, in a Roman prison, does not happen. God was in control of Paul's situation. That doesn't happen. Because in a Roman prison, you are either, you are either as a slave, or you're tortured, or maimed, or, or, or amused. So what Paul was going through, God was controlling the situation. Even with, as you saw in verse uh, 7, where Lysus, the commander, came along and with much violence took him out of their hands. That was God in control. Now, it may not seem like it, but he was. Then uh, verse uh, 22. But some days later, Felix arrived with... Uh, Drusilla, his wife, who was a Jew Jewish, and sent for Paul and heard him speak about faith in Christ Jesus. And as they were discussing righteousness, self-control, and judgment to come, Felix became, Felix became frightened and said, Go away for, the pre for my presence, and when I find time, I will summon you. See, he was afraid of the truth. Paul was telling them the truth. Paul was saying, you got to have self-control, man. You got to have Christ in your life. You gotta, he couldn't handle it. And you want to know why he couldn't handle it? Check this out. Verse 26. At the same time, to me, him too, he was hoping that money would be given by Paul. Therefore, he also used to send for him quite often and converse with him. So it has something to do with money. And then verse 27, but after two years had passed, Felix was succeeded by uh, Park Parkagus, Festus, and wishing to do the Jews a favor, Felix left Paul in prison. And it was political. He didn't want to know the truth. He had a knowledge of the truth, but he didn't embrace the way. Paul was allowed some liberties. Felix did not release it. Paul. Felix wanted to talk to Paul and also hope that Paul might pay him some money. <laughs> as I said, most common prisons are used as slaves are tortured, are maimed, are misused. This did not happen to Paul because God was in control of the situation. 
I just want to share that because some of us, I know we're going through some things. I'm going through some things. There are things that are happening that you cannot control. But you have to give it over to God. Is it easy? No. You got to fight for that. That's why it's so important to be in God's word. Deuteronomy 31.8. The Lord is the one who goes ahead of you. The Lord is the one that has gone ahead of you. The Lord knows what's going to happen to you. The Lord knew that I was going to be clumsy out of that chair and hurt my knees. He knew ahead of time. <clears throat> but that gives me no right to stop doing what God has called me to do if I'm able to do it. The Lord is the one who goes ahead of you. He will be with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed when these things happen to you. Are any of us in prison right now? Huh. Paul's in prison bringing forth God's word to somebody that's falsely accusing him. Right now, he was being falsely accused. And he still told the truth. He was still willing to be that mallet. To tell that truth. It seems Felix was seeking to improve his knowledge of the way but not com commit himself to it see I don't know if you understand if, if you saw it in verse uh, 14 this is what Paul said about the way but this I admit to you according to the way which they call a sect I I, I do serve the God of our fathers, believing everything that is in accordance with the law. Paul said, yeah, I admit that. I serve that way. I serve this way. This is what Felix did. Felix, it says that Felix had knowledge of the way. Having knowledge and doing the way is two different things. You can have knowledge of all the Bible all you want. But if you don't take it in and apply it, it doesn't mean a thing. An action figure is available to the one that wants to do the action. Have you placed yourself before God to be an action figure? Or is it just head knowledge? Or is it just, you know, I go to Moody Bible and I, I learn all, I've learned all the books of the Bible. From Genesis to Revelation. You can memorize all the scriptures of the Bible all you want. But if you never made a heart conversion, Felix, you won't know the truth. And when Paul was, when Paul was clawing at the truth of his heart, he sent them away. But when you come before God, he's going to send you away. Because you didn't embrace his truth. So it seems like Felix, he had a head knowledge. I hope there's no one here that just has a head knowledge of God. It's easy to have a head knowledge. Ask Satan. Hmm. He quoted scripture from Psalms 90. Ask Satan. Even the demons know the word, but that doesn't mean that there's a heart change. Also, as, as we are informed, Felix was visiting Paul in hope to receive a bribe, but Paul was urging Felix to make changes in his life, to consider standing before God, to serve the way and go beyond knowing. If you're here this morning and you know, but you never confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, God raised it from the dead, you need to do that. Phyllis could not handle the truth. It invaded his lifestyle. <laughs> See, that's what goes on. See, the truth invades people's lifestyle. I want to live the way I want to live. What you're telling me, that means I have to stop sinning this way. That means I have to stop all this shacking, calling it commonwealth law. Wealth marriage. That means, you know, I, I got to stop smoking trees. Okay, yeah, I know they done made it legal. 
to get high. You know, but 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 some of us do it just for escapism. You know, I understand if you got glaucoma. If anybody that can smoke weed in, in, in here, it could be me because I have glaucoma. But you ain't gonna see Pastor Ray coming up in here <laughs> smelling like a joint. Come on, y'all. I said I'm not gonna do that. Now legally I could, but I ain't gonna smoke no joint coming up in here. Come on, smell like, man, that's a pass. He, he smell like weed. He smell like a tree. And they know. Because the world makes it legal, don't makes it right. So we, we, we got to be willing to, you know, to, to do what is right in God's sight. See, Felix, he was, he was being convicted. That's why he sent Paul away. If you have the authority to send somebody away and you're feeling convicted, that's what you do. <laughs> and it, Or you do it in your conversation. You don't know what you're talking about. And the thing is, truth be told, for him to embrace what Paul was saying, it was going to cost him his political career. It was going to cost him finances. That's why he left Paul in prison. I want to be in favor with the people. Stop trying to be in favor with people. People going to get you in hell. Yeah, yeah, I said it. In hell. H-E-L-L. You trying to serve people? You trying to please people? Or you just have a head knowledge? Well, guess what? You're going to be in hell. Felix, if he never asked Christ in his life, which we don't see any, anything in the, in, the, in the scriptures, he most likely is in hell. And Felix could never say, God, you didn't give me a chance. Yes, I did. You had a conversation with my gavel. You had a conversation with Paul. He told you the truth that he was, that he was of the way and that the righteous... And the, and the wicked will be uh, uh, resurrected. He told you that. So you can never say that I never heard the truth. This is why we got to live out the truth, y'all. It's not easy. You will be falsely accused. You will be misunderstood. You will be called this. You will be called that. But guess what? I want to get called when I get up to heaven. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. That's what I'm looking forward to. I don't care what you call me on earth. You can call me a crazy old man. I don't care. But when I get up to heaven, I want to hear well done, thy good and faithful servant. So just tell the truth, y'all. Don't be afraid. Tell the truth. Get to understand the truth. Get to understand God's word. You know, as I shared in the introduction, that his word is truth. This is his word. This is the only, the only document that gives uh, how, the, how the world and all of us was created. When you go to Genesis, it says, then God said, God's word is truth. Don't you let nobody else tell you anything different. And then I would like to close with this. <coughs> If you want the truth, you must stop walking in your way. If you want the truth, you must stop walking in your way. Your way is not safe way, like the grocery store. That way is going to get you in trouble. And accept Christ as the only way. He said it, I'm the way. I'm that truth. I'm that life that you seek for. It's not about knowing. So just get that out of you, out of your system. It's about accepting his truth in your heart. I beg you today that if you have never asked Christ in your life, today is your day to ask Christ in your life. Don't leave this building without asking Christ. I don't know what might happen to you. Am I trying to scare you? Yes, I am. 
I'm trying to get, I'm trying to appeal to your heart to think about where you at, Felix. Felix at. Where you at? When Paul shared that, he was appealing to Felix's heart. Paul, I don't know if Felix's uh, wife came to Christ, but she had more common sense. Sound like she had more common sense than he did. She was listening. But the truth of God appeals to your heart. If you never asked them into your life, today is your day. I hope this made sense to y'all today. Amen. <laughs>